Hello class, today we are going to talk about the surface areas of pyramids and cones. In the previous video, we looked at the surface area for cylinders and prisms. Now we're going to look at pyramids and cones. All right. So first, let's start with formula. This is for the pyramids. Notice this is for a regular pyramid. Okay. Now, a regular pyramid is a pyramid that has a regular polygon as a base, so a square or a, an equilateral triangle or a regular hexagon, some of that. And the other thing that's very important is that the vertex of the pyramid is directly above the center of that base. All right? If it's not, if it's like this one over here, not going to work. All right? And one thing we do need to talk about real quick is this L in the formula. One half P L. P is perimeter again. L is the slant height or the lateral height. All right. This is not the height of the pyramid. The height of the pyramid goes from the apex, this very top vertex there, to the base. The slant height goes along the sides. All right. So that would be the height of this triangle if the triangle was standing up perpendicular to the ground. All right. Um, and the reason that this formula will not work for a non-regular pyramid is because if you take a look at the net of this, the height, the slant height here, is different from the slant height on this triangle, which is different from the slant height on this side, which is different from the slant height on this side. And so we don't have the same slant height, so it doesn't work. If you have a regular pyramid, those slant heights are all the same on all four sides or five sides or however many sides you have. Right. And that is why this formula will work for a regular pyramid, but it will not work for a non-regular pyramid. Right. Right. So let's take a look at this. What we have, we need to find the lateral area and the surface area of the regular hexagonal pyramid. So we know it's a regular pyramid, so the formula will work. We're going to start with lateral area. All right. And we already have everything. Let's see, the lateral area, uh, we don't, yeah, we do actually. Lateral area, we need the lateral height, the slant height, which they gave us. And for the total surface area, we need to find the area of this hexagon at the bottom. For that, we need the apothem, which they also gave us. So we have everything that we need. I don't have to do any intermediate calculations. So lateral area, one half the perimeter of the base times the slant height. Let's plug stuff in. Perimeter of the base, well, there's 10, and there are six sides. So 10 times 6 is 60. And the slant height is 14, right there. So 1 half of 60 times 14 is 420. And so there it is. Now let's take a look at the total surface area. You notice it is the area of the base times 1 half PL, which is lateral surface area. So the area of the base plus the lateral surface area. Notice this is very similar to the surface area of prisms and cylinders. Only difference is this time there's only one base instead of two, right? Prisms, cylinders, those have two bases. Pyramids only have that one base, so just one B. So we need to find the area of that base. Well, area of the base is one half times the apothem times the perimeter, which we already found, that was 60. And the apothem is 5 square roots of 3, so 1 half times 5 square roots of 3 times 60 plus 420, which is the lateral surface area. Simplify that and stick it in a calculator. Approximately 679.81. So the lateral area is 420 square feet, and the surface area is about 679.81 square feet. Right. So there it is. Not too bad, mostly just plugging stuff into the equation. So what I would like for you to do is pause the video, find the lateral area and the total surface area of this regular pentagonal pyramid, and then come back, check your work. Okay, you're yeah, back. Let's see how we did. Uh, so I did give you leave these two formulas up there, so that's nice. Hopefully, 
you've got lateral area of 146 meters squared and total area of 256 meters squared. If you didn't, let's check, take a look at this. So lateral area, we need one half the perimeter of the base times the lateral height, which they didn't give us. Lateral height would be coming along the edge here, along this face, and they didn't give us that, so we're going to have to figure it out. Fortunately, it's not too bad. If you think about it, we have the height here, we have this one here, which is the apothem, and the lateral height would just be an extra line right there, which would make this a right triangle. So we can do Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and that'll give us l. So we have the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that'll give us the square root of 53.29, uh, which is exactly 7.3, which is nice. So now we have our lateral height. We can plug that in. Perimeter is, of course, 8 times the 5 sides, so that would be 40. Just stick that in our calculator, and there's our answer. All right, not too bad. Now, for the total surface area, what we're going to do is we're going to take this lateral area, and we're going to add it to the base. All right. So we know the lateral area of the base. Well, this is a regular polygon, so that's 1 half apothem times perimeter. And so let's see the apothem they gave us, because they're nice. We got 5.5, .5, the perimeter we figured up over here. It's 5 times 8, so 40. Stick that in, and we have 110. And now we can take that, add it to our lateral area, because that's a formula. And we end up with a surface area of 256 meters squared. All right? So that wasn't too bad. Now, let's take a look at cones. So here we have the lateral area and surface area of a right cone. Notice that the surface area for a cone is the exact same formula as the surface area for a pyramid. The lateral area plus the base. Now, and really the lateral area is the same thing as well. It is the circumference of the base times one half. So one half the perimeter, right? Well, circle, so it's circumference instead of perimeter, times the slant height, right there. Notice that we have a right triangle again, so we can use Pythagorean theorem if we need to. Also, this is only good for right cones, okay? For a right cone, again, you look at the net, and you can see this. The net of a cone, you've got that circular base, and then you have the sector of another circle, where the slant height is the radius, right? Now, the problem with an oblique cone is this is the sector of a ellipse, which is a little bit weirder to find the area of, and that is beyond the scope of this class. It's not terrible, it can be done, but it's not pleasant because it is not quite proportional because it's not even distance all the way around. The radius changes. The radius here is longer than the radius there, and so we have weird formulas, and it's a bit beyond the scope of what we're doing. But still, lateral area is just pi times the radius of the base times the slant height. Total surface area, you take the lateral area and you add it to the area of the base, which is, of course, pi r squared, because it's a circle. So, let's take a look at this. Here we go. We're going to find the lateral area and the surface area of this right cone. So, we've got our radius, we've got our height, but not our slant height. So, we're going to have to figure out the slant height. But you'll notice... It's just a right triangle. So Pythagorean theorem is what we're going to do for this. And we are looking for the hypotenuse, so that would be c. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We, of course, want the square root of that, so we get c, so 10. And now we have the lateral height. We can find our lateral area. Pi times radius times the lateral height, the slant height. So pi times 6 times 10, which we figured out there. So that would be 60 pi which in our calculator is approximately 188.5. Right. Surface area, all we have to do is take this lateral area and add the base, right? which is a circle, so pi r squared. And we just plug that in. r is 6, so 6 squared. So pi times 6 squared, so that would be 36 pi plus 60 pi is 96 pi, which in our calculator we find is approximately 301.59. So the lateral area is about 188.50, let's see, meters, so square meters, 
and the total surface area is about 301.59 meters. Right. So again, not too bad. All you got to do is plug stuff into the formula. Every now and then we do need to find that slant height. All right. So what I would like for you to do is work on this one. I want you to find the lateral area of this traffic cone. So if you pause the video, work this out, and then come back and see how you did. All right, you're back. Let's see how you did. So we have a radius of 5.7 inches. We have a height of 18 inches. And they don't give us our slant height. So we're going to have to find that lateral height of this traffic cone. So not too bad. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So here we have 5.7, 8, looking for the hypotenuse. So square root of 5.7 squared plus 8 squared. We have approximately that. We'll just use that number right there for now because it's easier to type it into our calculator than a long irrational thing. And we we'll just plug it in. So we have pi times our radius of 5.7 times our slant height of square root of 356.49, which in our calculator we get approximately 338.10. So we have a lateral area of 338.10 square inches. Notice this is not the total area because we're not we're looking at this base here on the bottom and we don't have a base a circular base on that cone that we're looking for. We're just looking for the red part, the orange part. All right, so let's take a look at this. Let's work out these two. So pause the video and come back. Uh, I will remind you that the example three, the height was 18 inches. So all we're doing is changing the radius to 6.3. All right, so pause the video. I've already given you the formulas. Come back, see how you did. All right, let's see it. Hopefully you got answers for this cone here, lateral area of about 801.11 square feet and total surface area of about 1,507.96 square feet. And for the traffic cone with the new radius, should have about 377.45 square inches. If you did, great. If not, let's work them out. So, lateral area for number two, we have pi r l. Let's see, again, they don't give us the lateral height, so again, it's just Pythagorean theorem. So, we have the square root of 8 squared plus 15 squared, or the square root of 289, which is 17. And we just take that, plug that into our equation. And we have pi times 15 times 17, so 255 pi, which is approximately 801.11. For the surface area, we take this lateral area and we add the base. It's a circle, so the base is pi r squared. All we've got to do is plug in that 15 for the radius, so we have 225 pi plus the 255 pi we had over here which gives us approximately 1507.96. Yeah, I did use the 255 pi because that's exact. It's not rounded off like this is. So get a little bit closer answer. All right, so what about number three? Number three, all we're doing is we're taking that traffic cone we had on the previous page, and we are increasing the radius. So only looking for lateral area, not the surf, not total surface area, so we don't care about the base. All they did was the height, and we got a new radius, so we got a new find, a new lateral area, which is approximately 19.07. Plug that in, pi times the radius times our new lateral height, our new slant height, and there it is. Right. So not too bad. Again, just plugging it in. Use Pythagorean theorem to find out that slant height when you need it. All right. Now. What we're going to do here is find a composite solid. So here we have a cone sitting on top of a cylinder. Lateral area on this, we're going to find the lateral area of the cone, and it's sitting on top of the cylinder, so we're going to add it to the lateral area of the cylinder. Not too bad. So lateral area of the cone is pi r l, right? Pi times r times the slant height, which they gave us this time, so that's nice. And then, if you remember from the previous video, lateral area of the cylinder is 2 pi r, the circumference of the base times the height. 
we can just plug stuff in, don't have to find any intermediate stuff, which is good. So pi times our radius of, five, of 3 times our slant height of 5 plus 2 pi radius of 3 again, because the base for the cone is going to have the same radius as the base for the cylinder, times the height of the cylinder, which is 6. So 51 pi, or approximately 160.22. All right. Now for the total surface area, we're going to take the lateral area and we add the bases. So if you notice, we only have one base down here. So we just have to add that one base because the other base for the cylinder is covered up with the cone. So it's not exposed, so it's not surface. It's inside. Well, so there we go. Just need the one base. So that's pi r squared for the base. So pi times 3 squared which would be 9 plus 51 pi is 60 pi, and we end up with approximately 188.50. So the lateral area is 162.22 centimeters squared, and the total surface area is 188.5 centimeters squared. All right. Now, what do we do if we change some of the dimensions? Right. Now, in the previous video, we changed all of the dimensions, and it was really easy. You just changed by the total, the scale factor squared. But if you notice on this one, on A, we are only changing the radius. So the slant height is going to stay the same, and that makes things a bit of a problem. All right. And what we're going to have to do here, unfortunately, is work it all out. So originally, we have a radius of 10 and a slant height of 26. After we multiply that radius by 3 halves, we end up with a radius of 15. Slant height stay the same. So we just work this out. Surface area is pi r squared plus pi r l. So we plug in 10 for the radius on both of those and 26 for slant height. So we have, before the change, I don't know, that's weird looking. Anyways, before the change, we had 360 pi. And I'm just, we just want to leave it like that because it's a little bit easier to deal with. And after the change, my radius is 15, plug that in, slant height stay the same, and that gives us 615 pi. So how did it change? Well, you just stick it into a fraction, new over old, pi's are going to cancel out, simplify your fraction, and we end up with 41 over 24. So the surface area changed by a factor of 41 24 which is weird, and unfortunately there's not a shortcut on how to get that. You're going to have to work it out and then see what the ratio is. Remember, new over old. Okay. Now, part B, we multiply all the linear dimensions. So do we do this again? Nah. If you're doing the same thing to everything, all you have to do is take the scale factor of 3 halves, we're looking at area, area square units, so we're going to square it. Now they're going to work it out here, which is more work than we need to. But just so you can see this, we have 360 pi, and this one here is going to be 810 pi. But 810 over 360, that's 9 fourths, which is just 3 halves squared. So if you multiply all the dimensions, then all you have to do is take that scale factor and square it. If you only change one of the dimensions, then you got issues. Then you're going to have to take all this stuff, work it all out, and see what the ratio is. And it's a lot more work. But that's okay. I'm pretty sure you can do it. And I would like for you to do it here. So, number four, I want you to find the lateral and total surface area of this composite solid. For number five, I want you to find two things. A, what happens if you only make multiply the base edge lengths by one half, and that's going to be both of them. That's going to be this edge length and that edge length. And then B, if you multiply all the linear dimensions, that would be the base edge lengths and also the height. So this slant height would also be multiplied by one half. All right? So pause the video, work this out, come back, see how you did. All right, let's check your work. So, for the lateral area and total surface area on this composite here, you should have a lateral area of 275 and total surface area of approximately 318.01 square feet. Down here for part A, just changing the lengths of the bases, 
of the base, we should have the surface area is 330 seconds of the original surface area. And for part B, where we multiply all of it, including the slant height by one half, we should have a surface area that is one fourth of the original. All right, if you got those, great, you're awesome. If not, let's take a look at this. So first, number four, lateral area. This is gonna be the lateral area of the pyramid plus the lateral area of the prism. So the pyramid is one half PL, the prism is pH. So in both of these, the perimeter of the base of the pyramid is the same as the perimeter of the base of the prism. And so let's just plug stuff in here. They did give us all of that, so we're good there. So that would be five times five sides. And so that's 25, so I just put 25 there. Slant height is 10, height of the prism is six. So we have 125 plus 150, which is 275. So there's that. All right. For the total surface area, we're going to take that lateral area, and we only have to add one base, just the base here of the prism, which unfortunately it is a regular polygon, which means we need to find the apothem, and they didn't give it to us, so that's annoying. So to find that apothem, what we're going to do is we're going to use trigonometry. So we had to find the length of half of this side. Well, half the side is 2.5, half of 5. And then we're going to use the tangent of the angle there. And to get that angle, what we do is we take 360 degrees and divide it by twice the number of sides. So there's five sides, so we divide by 10. 360 divided by 10 is 36. And I should have worked that out somewhere in drone diagrams, but I was running out of space. Sorry. Plug that in your calculator, you get that the apothem is approximately 1.82. And so now we can plug that into our formula there to get the area of the base. And we multiply that all together, stick it in our calculator, we get approximately 310, there's 318.01 square feet. All right, now, for number 5A, we are gonna have to put this into a table, figure out what it was before, what is afterwards, what's the ratio, because it's not happening to everything. So let's see, before we have our formula, we plug in everything that they already gave us. Perimeter is six times four because this is a regular uh, pyramid. So we know that that's a square base. Six times four times our slant height of five, then plus the area of the base. And it's a square, so area is length times width or six times six, six squared. And that gives us a surface area of 96. All right, that's beforehand. So afterwards, same formula, we just gotta plug stuff in. Let's see, we have halved the lengths of the base edge, right? So instead of having lengths of six, we now have lengths of three. So the perimeter, instead of being six times four, is now three times four, and the area, instead of being six squared, is three squared. Take that, stick that all in your calculator, and you get a new surface area of 39. So we do this, we put this into our ratio. Remember, it's new over old. So we have 39 over 96, which simplifies down as 13 over 32. All right. Now for these part B, we are multiplying all of the linear dimensions and if it's all of the linear dimensions, all you do is you take that scale factor and you square it. One half times one half is one fourth. So when they do this to all of the linear dimensions, it is much easier. And so there it is. Hopefully you found that useful. And I will see you in the next video.